So I'd like to use this video as an opportunity to get more practice translating English sentences into logic statements. So let's do a few examples. Let's think about the sentence for every positive Greek letter epsilon bigger than zero, there is a positive delta bigger than zero such that delta is less than epsilon. So if you take a course on real analysis, you'll start to see sentences that look something similar to what I'm showing you here. This statement actually happens to be true. It says, if you pick a positive number, if you select a positive number epsilon, there's a second positive number that you can find that's smaller than your first one. So this happens to be a true statement. If I were going to translate this into logic symbols, I would say, for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero, such that, actually, instead of saying such that, sometimes we just write a comma to continue the, the logic sentence. So for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero, such that delta is less than epsilon. Let's do another example, translating English into logic. What if I switch the quantifiers around? What if I say there exists an epsilon bigger than zero such that for every delta bigger than zero, we have delta is less than epsilon. This actually happens to be a false statement. It says that every single positive number is smaller than some value epsilon. This would be equivalent to saying there's a single biggest number, which of course there isn't. So this happens to be a false statement, but it's still a statement. If I were going to write this using logic symbols, I would say there exists an epsilon bigger than zero, such that for every delta bigger than zero, we have delta is less than epsilon. So I'm also using this example to show you that if you switch the quantifiers around, you could change a true statement into a false statement. Let's finish with one more example. Let's think of this sentence. If x is a non-zero integer, then sine x is irrational. Using logic symbols, you could do it this way. For every x in z, x non-zero implies sine x is not in the rationals. Now in this case, this is a perfectly valid way to turn the sentence into a logical statement. But I noticed that I have two nots. I have x is not 0, and I have sine x is not in the rationals. So for this reason, you could also rephrase this to the logically equivalent statement using the contrapositive. So recall the contrapositive. If you have p implies q, that is logically equivalent to the contrapositive, not p, or excuse me, not q, implies not p. 
So I could write this as, for every x and z, sine x is rational implies x is equal to 0. So in this video, I'm showing you the relationship between English sentences and proposi propositional logic statements. But when we start to write proofs, when we actually write uh, an explanation of why something's true, I'd like you to use the English sentences because we are not robots. We write mathematical proofs for other humans to read. And when humans read, it's much easier to see an English sentence than a string of obscure characters. Okay, join us on our next video when we talk about negation. I'll see you there.